Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. <laughs> It's funny. We like don't know like we're about to start it and we just think like, hey. Uh, so welcome to Marriage Minutes at its pace. And this week we're going to talk talk about be thatching. Mm. What? What does that have to do with marriage? Well, as the spring is upon us and grass is turning green and there's a process uh, that most uh, lawn nerds or people who love their lawn immensely learn that there's a layer of deadness that lays over the soil that's below your grass. What? Wait, wait. Can you, for non-nerds, can you explain that again? Because that didn't make any. So every year you cut your grass, you cut your grass, there's leaves, there's everything, and all that falls in between the grass and lays on top of the soil at the root level where your grass is. Okay. And so, although your grass may be green, but when you go to feed it, when you go to fertilize it, when you go to water it, that layer, what's called thatch, is not allowing the nutrients to get to where it needs to be. So therefore, you're spending money on your lawn. You're pouring all these uh, fertilizers and everything on it. You're watering it. And it may not just be getting to where it needs to be. And that's because there's a barrier of deadness that's there. And wait, so, wait, can I ask you one question? Because yes. that's so interesting. So, but is there a thicker layer of thatch? Because like a wintertime, you know, in the snow and all that kind of stuff, does that have anything to do with like how, how much might you might have to do in the spring or does it matter? That's really interesting. No, it's right? just a matter of, like I said, whatever you know, whatever decomposes and falls there, it just gotcha. is there. Okay, and ahead. so there's a process called dethatching in which uh, you take a machine and you run it over your lawn and it goes down to the depth of where that soil is and it pulls all that deadness up. And you'd be surprised. It's almost <laughs> like you're cutting your grass again, but you can pull a lot out of your lawn and then you allow your lawn to freely receive the nutrients and the fertilizer and the the water that it so needs to prosper and to be green. And so marriage needs that. And there may be some areas of your life that we're just pouring and we're pouring and we're we're we're, we're thinking that we're doing something and it has no effect. And, and maybe there's a level of deadness that could be there that we haven't addressed. <laughs> and so uh, you know, I don't know what has decomposed in your marriage. I don't know what has hardened over your heart uh, where God can't get to it and, and, and pull it out so that love and the things of this, the things that you need to prosper, to be green, to be in your best uh, can get to. Uh, and so dethatching your marriage, uh, what does that look like? Uh, for us, uh, you know, I had some issues growing up that went unaddressed and until I really addressed them and, and really looked at them, you know, there was just, I was not going to get anywhere. You know, I, I had people in my life who loved me, but because the thatch had built so much in my life that I wasn't able to connect with them like I needed to. Uh, and so as I addressed those issues for me, uh, and started to let my guard down a little bit, uh, I was able to really understand what emotional connectivity is, especially in a marriage, uh, especially with my wife and being able to emotionally connect uh, and then emotionally connect with my daughter, you know? And so I think I'm starting to prosper in that life. I'm starting to prosper in that walk and understand of what emotional connectivity is. Now it's still challenging, you know? And so that's an area for me. That's a mic drop. Am I supposed to say something? <laughs> the only thing I could say is um, everyone is in need of the the dethatching, de -thatching. and that's why I kind of ask: Is it seasonal? And do you have to do that? Do you do that at the beginning of the spring every year, or does it matter when it happens? And the reason why I said that is because winter for me is representation of like something being dead, right? So our whole lives go through these seasons and we have to have those seasons 
of deadness, if you will, to appreciate what mm -hmm. happens in the spring. So I'm saying that to you because I know that our marriages go through seasons. They go through periods of summer and winter and spring and fall. And it is our responsibility if we want to see our relationships evolve and revolve that we do the de-thatching work. And if you cannot do it on your own, it is important that you find a deep thatcher mm -hmm. that can help you. And that may be church group, that may be an accountability person, that may be a counselor, but you cannot do all of that deep thatching on your own, especially if you have a really huge lawn. And especially, and I'm saying huge lawn because you've got a whole lot of issues or you've got a whole lot of years in your marriage, you've got health issues, you've got children issues, you've got financial issues, you've got spiritual issues. If your lawn has all of that deep thatching to do and you can't do it by yourself, well, don't sit there and be stupid. Get some help to deep thatch. That's all I have, baby. And, uh, and I'll say this and we'll be done. You know, I have, uh, like we've been in this house for four years, uh, be five years this year. And lawn looks nice. They did a lot of good work before. Uh, and I, and I, the previous owner, previous owner. And then I pay, you know, pay people to maintain the fertilizer and everything. Uh, but there was a certain parts of my, my, my spread or my lawn that didn't look right. And so I detached it myself. Uh, and now some of it looks very bare and very naked. Um, and so now I need to address that area. And so in dethatching, I'm saying is you may not present the way you want to present, uh, but just know that that's the process that it has to go through to be full and, and beautiful. And so, uh, and I'll leave it with this. Once that dethatching is done, you know, then you, you know, you may have to plug some holes, which is called air rate, air rate, and then allow the nutrients to get even deeper. So some of it may be that you need a connectivity with Jesus Christ. I don't know. Uh, but you know where you are and you, you know what needs to be addressed. And so we'll just leave it at that. Deep thatch, get it out so that God can pour everything that he has for you in your marriage in you and that your spouse can pour into you what God has for you that your children and that whoever God's placing in your life will be there for you. So with that, be well, be blessed. Take two. I, I imagine detaching hurts too, doesn't it? Uh, it, it yeah, it's like it, this. It, it's like, yeah. It's, it, so yeah. It, it's not going to feel good mm -hmm. to get better. Okay, now we do. That's a word. It's not going <laughs> to feel good to get better. Be well, be blessed. We love y'all.